This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, just about 6.53. Let's get you up to speed. Everything you need to know for your Monday here in the Morning Sprint. And this morning, we remember the 9-11 terror attacks. And while they were 22 years ago, the efforts to identify victims is going on still today. Sydney Charles has the details. Bronte Sarasky has details on an organization volunteering to help wildfire victims in the cleanup and recovery process. And Mark has your forecast on a cloudy day with some afternoon sprinkles likely. But first, some breaking news overnight. The intersection of North Division and North River Drive was closed for several hours when a pedestrian was seriously injured in a crash. It happened around 8.15 last night. Officers kept the roads closed for several hours to investigate. Those roads reopened right around midnight. As of right now, now we only know the pedestrians injuries were serious, but we do not know the extent of those injuries or the identities of anyone involved. If you know anything about this crash, you're asked to call Crime Check 509-456-2233. More breaking news overnight. The number of people killed by a devastating 6.8 earthquake in Morocco is rising. More than 2,400 people are dead following the powerful earthquake that struck the country late Friday night. This morning, rescue teams are still searching through the rubble for any signs of life. The Biden administration has reached out to the Moroccan government to help provide immediate assistance. And today marks 22 years since the attacks of 9-11. For many Americans, that September morning is a distant memory, but for many others, the pain is a constant presence. 2,753 people died in Lower Manhattan during the 9-11 attacks. And just this weekend, the remains of two more were identified by the medical examiner. 40% of those lost are still unidentified. The testing of remains all these years later is part of a pledge to keep identifying the remains of victims for as long as it takes so that the families of victims can have closure. Let's take a look at our first alert weather and uh, on this Monday morning, we're definitely not going to see a major change when it comes to the amount of rain we could get. It's going to be sprinkles this afternoon, but we're going to be very consistent when it comes to temperatures as again, some mild air moves in. We're sitting at 55 into the valley, 58 at Spokane International. We're going to hold that for an hour or two, and then our high today is going to be 81 degrees. A judge in Colfax could make a, a key decision today that could dictate the future of the Pac-12 conference. Ten schools plan to leave the conference after this school year. Two remaining schools, Washington State and Oregon State, want to make sure those departing schools don't get to decide the conference's future. A conference bylaws say when a school announces it's planning to leave, it does not get to vote on any future conference matters. But WSU and OSU worry that a meeting called by the Pac-12 commissioner for later this week will allow them to do just that. You can read more details of this extensive court filing and the WSU president's statement on challenging the Pac-12 right now on KXY.com. A local man accused of participating in the January 6th insurrection will be back in court tomorrow. According to court documents, Elliot Williams was recognized by someone in Spokane who told the FBI they knew Williams from social interactions. Williams is scheduled to appear before another judge Tuesday over Zoom. He is not allowed to leave Eastern Washington without court permission. All right, some breaking news. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un appears to be on a train heading to Russia. Multiple South Korean media outlets reporting Kim has a potential meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, neither Russia nor North Korea have officially confirmed this meeting, but Putin reportedly arrived in the eastern Russian city of Vladivostok today. It's been more than three weeks since the Gray and Oregon Road fires broke out in Spokane County, claiming hundreds of homes and two lives. Now that the fires have died down, homeowners have been able to return, with many finding their homes reduced to a pile of ash and debris. While they sift through the rubble, Disaster Aid USA is giving them a helping hand free of charge. The organization offers services like clearing all debris, removing trees, and more. Disaster Aid USA says its team of local volunteers will be here as long as needed, and that if your home is in need of cleanup, to reach out. That information will be up on our website, kxly.com. The new Kramer Bridge in Liberty Lake is now open. It goes over I-90 and connects East Country Vista Drive and East Mission Avenue. There's also a new stoplight at the intersection of Country Vista Drive and Kramer Parkway. 
Spokane County Sheriff's Office is using video surveillance technology paid for with federal funds. Lieutenant Justin Elliott says the whole project cost about five million bucks. It was secured almost entirely through the American Rescue Plan. The Sheriff's Office had already been using automated license plate readers, but it says those combined with new flock safety cameras takes their policing to a new level. But of course, video surveillance comes with concerns about invasion of privacy as well. You can watch my special report tomorrow on 4 News Now at 6. We'll check weather one more time next.